Hi, welcome back to Brand Tech TV. Today we're going to be having a look at the Sony LF S50G smart speaker with Google Home Assistant built in. It should be a very close comparison to the Google Home speaker, not the Google Mini or the Google Max, but the mid-size one in terms of sound quality and output. Um, there are some functions that don't work yet on it, but probably will come soon. It won't make phone calls, but that's not something we particularly use the Google Assistant for anyway, but it does work completely with all the other smart features at the moment. It will control your lights, your TV, uh, do Google streaming, uh, it can do broadcasting, um, so you can send messages to the whole house, it will integrate with the rest of your home speakers, so you can have music playing in every room. So let's have a quick look what's in the box and what it sounds like and how easy it is to set up. First of all, we've got to cut the tab at the top and one at the bottom and then it just slides straight off and gently lift the top off very nice looking love the chrome base I think that looks very nice in the box we then have some little information leaflets warranties your regular packaging stuff and a power supply and that is it that's well packed we'll keep it nice and safe uh, voice commands so a little quick help guide which shows you what you can say to the speaker it's the standard Google ones that's not a problem on the back we have an NCF point so you just tap your phone to it and that will then pair it that way got two speakers, a little bit of dirt from packaging, uh, you've got your Bluetooth pair button and a Microsoft mute button as well. On the bottom you have a dimmer switch and a hold switch, we'll see what they do later on. Okay, I'll just plug this in and then plug it in at the base as well. Have a little light on the back so you can tell it's powered up. Hi. I'm your Google Assistant. You can ask me questions and tell me to do things. To get started, download the Google Home app. We've already downloaded the Google Home app. It's looking slightly different now they've had an update. So, so we'll just see if we can find our new speaker. Yeah. Go to the second icon, it's a uh, compass. Discover, setup, yes. Yes again. Yeah, why not? Now we're going to have this in the bedroom because it's got a clock on the front, so that'd be a nice bedside clock, hopefully. Connect to our network. It's found the time. And these are all just the license agreements, so just click next to those. Yes, we agree to have our voice recognised. Yeah, we agree to personal information. Confirm our address. And the services that we've got added to it. And just continue. Continue. Hi, I'm your Google Assistant. I'm here to help. To learn a few things you can do, continue in the Google Home app. Again, okay. your standard Google commands. Um, it's got the morning and nighttime routines 
automatic now where you can customize them to turn lights off when you say good night, um, turn the heating off. Uh, when you say good morning, you can turn lights on, turn the heating on, turn coffee on. And just finished there. So that's now done. We can now set up the voice match for my personal account. Okay, that's now set up to recognize my voice using my personal account. Just come back out of that. And that is all we need the phone for. Move that to one side. Okay, Google. Play me some music. All right, music on Google Play Music. Here you go. Okay, Google. Play me some music from Spotify. All right, music on Spotify. Here you go. Okay, Google. Stop. You mustn't have too much music being played due to new European copyright laws, so just a few seconds should hopefully not get us into trouble with the great expanding European government. Um, I'll do a comparison next with this one and the Google speakers so you can see how the sound quality compares. We're going to show you what the buttons at the bottom do. You've got the dimmer button and that's for the clock so you can see it's nice and bright even though I've got a studio light on it. Press it once and now not so bright. And then now that looks off, I'll actually yeah. dim the studio light. I'll turn that off completely. Yeah, so that's completely off. Full brightness, which at night, that's how it was at night, and that was very bright. You wouldn't want to sleep with it like that. Now, in the app, there's a setting to dull it at night, but didn't seem to make much difference. Mm, now, that looks off on the camera, but I can just about make There you go, you can just about make out that the lights are still on. And then that's completely off. But the full brightness one is quite nice and bright. Um, hold up, one would assume. Hey Google. Yeah, you're still listening to me. The hold button prevents you from using the gestures for three minutes. The microphone is muted. Because it also mutes the microphone as well. You've got to press and hold that down. I can't see anyone actually ever using that feature. Um, you want to pick up your speaker, press and hold a button for three seconds to lock out all the gestures. The mic's back on. Right. So that's pause and play. What's the weather like? Right now in Chatham it's 20 and partly cloudy. Today it'll be cloudy with a forecast high of 21 and a low of 13. Because yeah, you can, if you have a, uh, other songs playing, you can fast forward and skip tracks. I haven't got a queue of royalty theme music so you can't show that. I just want to do a quick comparison of the different plug sizes for the three devices. The Sony has a much bigger power supply out of all three, as you can see.
If we compare them on top of each other, you can see the difference. So hopefully the Sony should have a much more powerful speaker, giving a more full depth sound. On the bottom of the Google standard speaker, we've got a rubberized base and a plug that goes directly in the bottom so it won't accidentally pull out. And the same with the Sony. The Mini, on the other hand, uses a micro USB plug which goes into the back of it rather than the bottom so it could accidentally pull out. We'll now plug them in and do a speed test to see how quick they boot. We can see the lights lighting up as they now have power and we should hear them chime once it's ready. I managed to find a royalty free source, bensounds.com. So I'll post a link to them in the description below as I'm using a sample track that they have for the audio test. First of all, we'll try the Sony. And to adjust the volume, just a little finger spiraling around the Sony logo, and you can adjust it. So we'll have all of them set to 50% first of all. and I'll try and play it on each speaker separately. I've got all three speakers set to 50% volume, my phone's set to 100%, and so I'll have a fair and honest comparison between how they all sound. So let's start off with the Sony at 50% volume. Okay, we're going to do the same 30 second test on each speaker again, but this time all devices will be set to 100% volume, the speakers and the phone output. So you may want to drop the speaker volume of your device, but we're just seeing what they can push out. So here goes the Sony. Okay, we're going to compare 
these two, the Google Home and the Sony LF-S50G uh, side by side with uh, just pausing the same track in between so we can quickly switch from one to the other. Again, this is both devices at 100% and both speakers at 100%. So do adjust your speaker volume now so we don't uh, make it too loud for you. But it's just to see what they can output. I do believe that the Sony does seem to be giving the louder output, which is the second one that we heard. But I actually quite like the sound of the um, home as well. I think they're both a very, very close comparison. It's going to be very much a personal preference. Definitely the Sony is pushing out more sound, I believe. I, but for some reason, this, the Google Home sounds like it might have a little bit more bass. Um, although I can feel vibrations more from the Sony because it seems that bit louder, very difficult to tell them apart. I think, I think I actually might prefer the Google one. Um, both are wonderful, don't get me wrong, both both seem great. I, I must say the, the Sony does look that bit nicer, I think, with a bit of chrome at the bottom, the clock on it, the touch-free um, gestures for controlling the volume is wonderful. Um, but you know it's a simple touch and wipe clean on the Google Home. Um, it's viewer's choice really on this one. I'm trying a test with both of them running at the same time at other ends of the board and the volume's on zero and I can adjust it from my phone and you can see and hear that they respond. So you can see that one's going up and you can see the dial on there increasing. Let's bring that down. And I'll start off at zero and I'll play the same track again on both of them at the same time. Okay, from zero, one click, I can hear the Google. Okay, I'm on 10 and I still can't hear the Sony. I don't know how directional this mic's gonna be to hear if you can hear the stereo effect. The Google Home definitely has more sound and bass coming out of it. Closer, but I'll now come to this side and try again. Again, I'll start it off quieter because I was sitting that side, but I was facing this one.
to about 55, 60, I, from being very, very close to the Sony compared to where I was sitting, because I was sitting further back, the sounds coming from more there rather than just the Google Home. So the Google Home is definitely more directional because it does have a forward-facing speaker and then two side uh, reverb speakers whereas this has one top and bottom and so the sound's coming out. When we saw this demonstrated it had a curved perspex back to it for display. I have a feeling that was probably seriously amplifying the sound and giving it much better bass and uh, a better flow from it. So I think I would personally recommend the Google Home. Unless you can get that curved back to um, spread the sound back out, then the Sony would probably be better. It really does want that curved first spec that I saw in the shop demo. Talking about the how the speakers are, we can take this one off. This one's just held in by a couple of magnets. And we can see that this is the powered driver that they have in here and then these two just reverb from the back pressure of the main driver speaker and this is also meant to come off as well and here we can see you've got your little dials for your eliminated clock and there's a small speaker there and there is a larger speaker just up there but that is how that one sounds so of course you're going to get the sound spreading out more evenly so if that was in the center of the room you'd get a full sound from that um, and again, putting it in a corner would actually also help amplify the sound out of that one more so because it's not being thrown in a particular direction so you are getting a what they'd call a 360 sound from that one. Because obviously it's going to be, you've got a directional output there and out the two sides. But I have a feeling that one is working and producing a better range of sound. Okay, have a nice day, take care, and see you around later. Bye-bye.